Good morning, Pray First. I'm so excited to be back with you today. It is Thursday of this week. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. It's Thursday already. Hope you're having a great day this morning. Um, hope it's starting out great for you. Hey, Neil. Hey, Kimmy. Thanks for joining me this morning, if you will. As you're coming in this morning, if you will, just hashtag live, hashtag shared. And um, also what you can do, if you don't know, you can also put the at symbol and start typing, no spaces, put the at symbol, no spaces, and then put the person's name that you might want to invite into the room and they will get notified. Their name should pop up and you should be able to tap on their name and they'll get it just like a notification, like as if you're commenting on their page or just, um, you know, commenting on something that they have posted. So you can type their, per their name down in there um, in the comments below and they will get notified and hopefully join us. I hope you're having a great day. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Mike. Hey, Lana. Hey, Dee. Hey, Raymond. Hey, Lori. Hey, Nita K. Hey, Del Delilah. Oh, that's a cool spelling. Okay. Hey, hey, Barbie. We're so, I'm so glad that you're here and um, given the opportunity that gave me the opportunity to speak again today. Can you hear me? Okay. Let's start with that, with some sound. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay. If you will, give me a thumbs up or yes, I can hear you, all that good stuff. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Loletta. Hey, Rebecca. Okay. Great. All right, George. Hey, George. Happy belated birthday. Um, if you are new, if you will, just let us know, hashtag new, um, down in the comments. If you are regular attenders, just say howdy or something. Um, but please say something and let us know because except for just seeing you guys come in right now, I won't know that you were here unless you say something. It can be a, just a quick good morning or how you doing, that kind of thing. But as the, the hearts and likes and the care button are going now, that means hello to all of you that are brand new uh, or all of you that are just coming in. We just want you to know that we are welcoming you and glad that you are here in this interactive conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm Brandy Bell, Pastor Bell's wife, and I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to talk with you today. <clears throat> I am trying to turn the sound up. I do not know why it is so low. I think I need a new phone. Maybe I need the new 12. Hint, hint, Doug. <laughs> Maybe I need the new, the new phone <laughs> that's coming out. All right, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> but if you can't, if you'll turn your volume up, I do have it as loud as it's going to go. So uh, can you hear me now if I speak louder? I'm hoping that it's louder. Okay. All right. Anyway, today I was really kind of struggling with what I was going to talk about this morning. Um, and I felt like, gosh, Lord, are you going to give me something or am I going to... Eh, is it going to be that down to the wire? And I was kind of, you know, and, and that's happened many times. But um, this morning, it wasn't until, gosh, almost 20 till that I was kind of sure about what I was going to speak about. Um, and um, I felt I was kind of going through some of the, these devotionals that I have and different things like that. And I stumbled upon one that um, Charles Stanley had talked about, and he was talking about peace. And after I read that, it, God kind of expanded upon how he wanted me to hear, what he wanted me to hear from that. And then I feel like that's what I'm supposed to share with you guys. So, okay, peace. And I titled the, um, the talk, Peaceful, Easy Feeling. And I just did that just so that y'all Eagle fans would just come in here. <laughs> no, just teasing. Um, I did that just because that's what we all want, right? We want that peaceful, easy feeling. We want life to just be, you know, just smooth waters without any kind of um, rocky roads going on. And we want everything to just be great and life to be wonderful. But we all know that's not always the case, correct? We all go through things. We're all dealing through things. And we all have this battle in our head that happens a lot of times. 
when the enemy tries to steal from us our peace, our, um, you know, just the peace that we have available to us. And he just tries to steal that from us by complicating things and us f focused on our circumstances. Anybody give me a ha hashtag? Yep, yep. Okay, so what is peace? Y'all know that I'm like carrying around a dictionary all the time. And we have one. Aren't you glad we don't have to carry around that big Webster's Dictionary like we had to back in school, the days of school? Some of y'all are young enough. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about probably. Um, you've always just had a, the electronic version available to you. You know, your little small phone that has access to everything. But um, yes, we carry around all kinds of, of tools now with us. We carry around um, concordance and the Bible and the dictionaries and thesauruses. We carry around all those wonderful things um, at our fingertips. And so I definitely love to define words. And so peace is freedom from disturbances, mental calmness, being free from anxiety or distress, to be content with who you are in yourself. Now, spiritually peace, or spiritual peace, actually, actually, it was a definition. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, it's the state of being mentally and spiritually at peace with enough knowledge and understanding to keep oneself strong in the face of discord or stress. How many of y'all have recently or are dealing with discord or stress of some sort in your life. Woo, woo, right? Give me a hand or a yep, that's me or absolutely or just something to the affirmative to let me know that you have dealt with something of discord or stress recently or right now. Um, yeah, I think we all have a little bit of it, a little bit, right? Okay. So how do we have peace? Now, peace doesn't mean not going through something, right? It doesn't mean that you're everything hunky-dory everywhere. That's not what peace is. Peace is, you know, freedom from the mental calmness. Because do we? Do y'all know that we can have mental calmness and still our circumstances be crazy? that we're going through stuff. Um, so how do we obtain a peaceful state when our life is actually chaotic? Well, do you know that in Colossians 3, 2, it tells us that it's about what we think. There we go, back to our, our thinking again, right? Well, Colossians 3, 2, and if somebody would write down the address for me, Colossians 3, 2 says, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Well, who sits in heaven? Who is in heaven? You know, our Father, our Father, Christ, um, he's in heaven. So that's what we need to be thinking about. We need to be thinking about him. We need to turn to shift our focus back to God. But sometimes we are so swept up, so consumed with what someone did, what some, someone is doing, what someone said about us, the criticism, um, a problem you're having, the job that you need, <laughs> the job that you have, <laughs> the job you won't want. <laughs> Um, the debt that you've accumulated, a bad conversation that you were a part of, an un, um, you know, a friendship that's been um, challenged or a friendship that's been, you know, um, not broken, but uh, wounded. Let's say that way. A, a friendship or a relationship of some sort that's been wounded. Um, a sickness that you have or pain that you're going through, emotional, mental, or physical, um, your next steps that you have with school, the next steps that you have with work, the next steps that you have with your housing situation, whether you're buying or selling your home, 
um, the relationships that you have, the relationships you wish you had. Um, and as I've listed these things, guess what we have done? Guess what we do when we start thinking about all of these things? We are tossing and turning. We can't sleep. We're thinking about all of these things. Where has our focus shifted? It's focused and shifted to the problems, the circumstances, the situations that we're dealing with, right? <clears throat> and that's what Colossians is talking about. We have to, we have a choice where we think. Now, we don't have a choice necessarily about the thought that comes in our mind. That's human nature. But we do have a choice what we harbor on, what, what our boat pulls into the harbor and what slip it pulls into, what car parking spot that that thought is allowed to park. Do we allow it to park? Do we give it permission? Do we grant it permission to come in and, and sit there and think on those things? Where are your thoughts focused on? God tells us that we have to shift our focus to him on the things of heaven. As I talked on Monday, um, it's about making that prayer and petition to God. Make your requests known. And then it comes with a promise. And when you do, the peace of God will come upon you. And it will surpass all understanding. <clears throat> So why do we need to focus on God? Because who knows how to handle your next steps? Who, who knows how to handle our next steps? Who knows how to mend the bridges that were or could be or are about to be broken in our lives? Who can tell you what you need to do? Or reassure you that he has you, that you are not out here all by yourself. Who can give us that reassurance? God, I'm asking rhetorical questions because I know you know, but we all, me included, I'm reminding myself, y'all know that every time that I get on here, that I'm not just talking to you, that I'm talking to all of us, us, us is me and you, right? We, um, so I'm not saying anything to you that I'm not reminding myself of. If you have asked Jesus to be the God of your life, to be the Lord of your life, then you have his Holy Spirit inside of you. And that's where peace comes from. Now, if you don't know Jesus and you're just exploring God, then it's you're going to have a hard time getting that peace because the peace that, that surpasses all understanding does, is not available to this world. It's not. It's only available to those who, it's a gift. It's a gift from Jesus. Um, and uh, Jesus promised he would send the Holy Spirit when he left this earth. He would, t who would teach us everything and would remind us everything that Jesus said. And when Jesus spoke, what was he doing? He was saying the things that the Father was telling him to say, right? So when we see Jesus, we see God. Now, the same Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same one that we get when we have that, that we have asked Jesus to come into our lives, to be the Lord of our lives, to save us. And man, can I tell you, I have never, ever once regretted following Jesus. If, if you can say that, give me a yep, yep. Are you unable to sleep? I ask you this morning. Are you having trouble sleeping? Are you having trouble thinking about anything else but your problems and how to solve them? Shift. Shift the focus. Shift the focus over to God. You've got to shift the focus. And sometimes, guys, look. Don't beat yourself up. Don't you dare let the enemy beat yourself up because, oh, there you go, thinking about it again because he's going to say that. He is going to say that. He says it to me. I know I'm not anybody special, so he's. I know he's talking to you like that as well. Oh, there you go, thinking about it again. Don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. You just say, Lord, 
Help me focus on you and all of the things that you're helping me with. Help my mind to only think about you and not my circumstances. I know that's easier said than done. And sometimes it's kind of a muscle memory type thing that we have to establish while we're constantly reminding ourselves where our focus has to be. Because it's easy just to sit and think and stew about what's going on. But it's it takes more discipline and more, um, it's a choice. It really is a choice. And sometimes it takes a while for us to develop the ability to swipe left or right when those thoughts come in, right? But we can do it because God says, think, think about the things of heaven. And he's not going to say do something if he hasn't already given us the ability to do it. Amen? Yes. Okay. So we need to say, God, help me to focus on you and to trust that you know what I need. Because guess what? We're his children. If you're a parent or you are a parental influence on somebody, do you not recognize when a, a child needs something? Of course. Of course you do. If you, I don't care whose kid it is. If you see their shoes untied, you're going to say, hey, hold on a second. And you're going to try to tie their shoe. Or you're going to at least tell them, hey, your shoe's untied. Right? Those are basic things. That's just human. That's just being a good human. Well, think about how pitiful we are and how great our God is. Is he not going to prepare? Is he not going to provide? Yes, of course, he's going to do that because we're his children. Amen? So we got to say, we got to make a declaration. I will, I won't allow the enemy to rob me of my peace and say it out loud. Remember Doug was talking about the um, not today Satan. We have to put up our boots, you know, and get ready, get battle ready and say with our mouth, no, Satan, no enemy. You're not going to do this. I won't allow it. I won't allow the enemy to rob me of my peace by having me focus on my circumstances or focus on this world. I will choose to focus on you. Now, Deuteronomy 31.8 is a great reminder, you guys. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, do not be afraid. So if it says, do not be afraid, that means that we have the ability to not be afraid, right? Or discouraged, discouraged for the Lord will personally, whew, if you don't get excited over this, check your pulse. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Man, I was supposed to have surgery Monday. I'm sorry, yesterday. And all of that went to the wayside on Monday. And that's a whole nother story and a whole nother pray first. And, and it's probably going to end up being a book. But anyway, do you know how discouraged I could have gotten? I immediately just said, Lord, you're in control and I trust you. That's all I can do. That is all I can do, but I'm going to focus on you. And yesterday, I, you know, it was really hard for me yesterday because the surgery day came and the time came and it went. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I could have a pity party right now and think, mm, well, I'm supposed to have surgery right now and get this back fixed, but I'm not. But that's human nature for a second. But I said, nope. And I talked to a few people and I said, no, I'm just going to have to um, trust the Lord, continue to trust the Lord. His, his, his perspective is different. He sees things that I don't see. He knows things. He knows the before. He knows the now. And he knows the after. And he knows why I'm having to wait. He knows why you're having to wait. He knows all of the situation that's going on. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 31.8. That's a little side note. So do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord. Listen to this, y'all. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. Do you hear me? He will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. He who has ears to hear, hear the word from our Lord. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Can somebody give me a woo-hoo? 
Is that not awesome? He is with us. He will not leave us nor forsake us. He will not abandon us. We have to just say, hey, I trust you. So in conclusion, I ask you today, which prayer do you need to pray? Do you, as a new believer, are you someone that's seeking God? Are you tiptoeing into the shallow end of following Christ? Do you need to say, I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior? If that's you, I would love to introduce you to him. And it's very simple. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, I need you. Come inside of me and be the Lord of my life. Forgive me for all that I have done in Jesus' name. It's very simple. Come be the Lord of my life. Or, and if you did that right now, please tell me, I just got saved. Or are you the second person? The person that says, I need to shift my focus to that of the things of heaven Christ and the Holy Spirit who lives within me. Is that you? I'm number two. Maybe you maybe you know all of this and you just needed to be reminded of this. But I guarantee you that you're probably like me and there's something that you're thinking on. And it's more circumstantial than it is on Christ and the things of heaven. So I'm just going to pray for us right now. And I um, will leave you with that. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, 722. We're doing great. All right. Father, thank you so much for your word, your word that sets us free, that is true because the truth, what sets us free, God. And thank you so much that you are faithful, that you go before us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You don't abandon us. We're your children, God. And I thank you that all of these promises that I'm saying are found in your word, that I'm not saying anything. This is not according to Brandy. This is according to you, Father. And Lord, I thank you that you are, oh, you are in control. When the world seems chaotic, when our life seems chaotic, we can trust and we can have the peace that surpasses all understanding and we can just trust you, God. And I thank you that we will remind ourselves, you will remind ourselves, and we won't be discouraged by what's happening around us or through us, Lord, but I thank you that we can trust that you have all of the pieces of the puzzle and you're putting it together in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag recorded. Have a great day. Don't let the enemy beat you up when you're trying to shift your focus because, hey, we all go through it. We have to do it. We have to remind ourselves because our mind, if left idle, can kind of just go wherever we don't want it to go. And it seems to settle on what's kind of going on around us. But we just have to say, nope, God, I trust you. I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. You will not abandon me. And you have gone before me and you are in control even when it seems like it's uncontrollable. Y'all have a great day. I love you.